Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by a contribution from Paul, and here's his story. Hi, Ollie. My name is Paul. I'm 25 years old, and I've been listening to your channel for a while now. I can't tell you how helpful and how useful your channel has been. Your work is so important. My story that I would like to share with you has to do with my narcissistic parents. I would like to know your thoughts, honest evaluation, and perspective on the matter. Thanks for all you do for survivors of narcissistic abuse. My childhood has a lot of holes, but I will share as much as I can. I lived in a town home in Northeast Philadelphia during my early childhood, both my mom and with both my mom and dad. It wasn't until two years later my younger sister would be born. My first word was Joe. Joe was my elderly neighbor who enjoyed hanging out on the front porch and chat with neighbors. I would often exit the house and sit with Joe for hours when I was four or five years old. These memories with Joe are always warm. At some point my mom cut him out of my life and locked the doors to keep me from leaving. When it comes to my mother and father during these times, there isn't one that I can point to that feels safe and warm as those with, as those with Joe. My early memories with my parents are those of conflict and tension. The only memories of my parents are of me hiding under the table, her degrading me, and just being scary. <clears throat> My mother tried making me vacuum my messes and yelled at me when I ran over the wire at age five. My mother would yell at my father for not making enough money and get angry at whatever she felt like at the time. I remember being in the booster seat where I would be, where I would be fed and seeing my mom and seeing my mom, which like holding a, seeing my mom witch-like holding a knife, intimidating my father. She looked at me in the seat and would, and would deliberate with my dad whether I would remember such instances. There was a fight in my parents' room. The door opened. She grabbed my dad's hand and hit herself, then claimed my dad was hurting her and made my father the bad guy. I looked at the photos during my years in preschool and I had a long red scratch on my cheek and another with a black eye. I suspect the black eye is from me getting in fights at school with an individual I wrote about in my school journal. In the journal I also wrote about my disdain for the cops and my fantasy of running away. Reading this was blowing was mind blowing because I was five I remember red and blue lights flashing at my front door, my mother and a cop talking. The cop came up to me. The picture of me with the black eye also included a buddy of mine whom I have whom I have only one memory of. <clears throat> this party across the street for Halloween. My mom was partying and I was sitting there on the floor somewhere. I expressed my desire of wanting to go to bed but my mom just ordered the homeowner to give me a toy and place me in the basement with the boy. I remember being very upset that my mom was putting me in such an environment around partying adults. The boy's father, based on the connections I built, was the cop. The cop pulled some strings to help my mother's situation based on my memory of my parents' interaction with him. At some point, I remember him admitting he can only do so much and seeing my parents worried and pissed. This is all very hard to comprehend because I suspect my mother was even under scrutiny from my teachers. In kindergarten, a different school, an adult would walk me into my mother's car. I remember some bickering between others and my mother. How am I the boy's mother? And I know what... And I know... <clears throat> how I'm oh I'm sorry how I am the boy's mother and I know what's best kind of thing on top of that my younger sister was pouty and stubborn more than usual she told her teacher that mom locked her in the closet with a knife this is something my mom talks about as a joke now how my sister was a piece of work or something 
it's probably 100% true. I would lock myself in the closet often just for some peace and quiet. When things got bad, she would excuse me of wanting to get rid of her. So she would accuse me of wanting to get rid of her because of the chaos. <clears throat> the chaos she's causing. I don't know why you would assume the black eye was from a friend at a party when it's clearly at, from her. She's violent. Not only is she violent, she's calculatingly violent. She knows what she's doing is wrong because she's already wondering if you'd be able to remember the incidents. The fact that she would take your father's hand and hit herself with it is just, she's just dangerous. It's the worst type. The worst type. It's borderline personality disorder. I have no early memories of my father, probably because he was working and stressing to please my mom. The few early memories <clears throat> that I possess are of my mom yelling at me for something that I did wrong or complaining to me. The typical hunched over, finger wagging witch like appearance of her yelling at me and me running for cover under the kitchen, kitchen room table. She would shame me for acting this way. My mom would walk around the table I was hiding under and try to get me out, sometimes by pulling, but I would always refuse and fought back since I feared her. Me fleeing to tables or residing under tables became... Uh, hiding under tables came to be a behavior of mine I would carry through my childhood. Not always to get away from my mother, however. I just felt safe there. I used to hide under, I used to go in closets and under my bed just to, just to get away from her. Like when she was raging, like I would get into spots where she couldn't get to, but if she found you, you were dead. You were dead if she found you. <laughs> One time she picked up the guy was under the bunk bed and she under the she picked it. I mean, she get like crazy strength. <clears throat> <clears throat> Going into my preschool and elementary years is where I believe my mother broke me. But I still have trouble understanding all the components. At the age of seven, now moved out of the suburbs of Philly, I was diagnosed with an auditory processing disorder where my right ear could only process about 30% of the information. I have an early memory of me on the floor, her yelling at me. I think she was either slapping the side of my head or banging something next to my ear. Whatever happened led to the violent ringing in my ears and brief loss of consciousness. This held me back in first grade. This is confusing because when I was being evaluated, I remember being confused on how to do the test. The proctor explained what to do. Then my mom came over and gave contradictory information. Something like, only I, if I hear it clearly or loudly enough. I sat there doing the beep test and had trouble rationalizing what beep meet, met her standards. I looked up, saw my mom raising her right and left hand in no particular order, and I would mimic her. I also did an IQ test where my mom said if I didn't know or didn't figure it out right away or was too hard to skip the question, I scored average but have since found out my IQ is much higher. My mother claims it's because of my healthy upbringing and intervention. Anyway, I would often sit down with my mom to study and work on these issues that affected my language and speech. I was <clears throat> I was rambunctious I was a rambunctious, playful kid, and this changed sharply going into my third year at elementary, and I became extremely obedient. The time I spent with her were some of the most stressful and destructive years of my life. Her help her help with school required me to take a lot of verbal lot of her verbal abuse of how stupid and disappointing I was to her. 
if I didn't remember something or couldn't get things right, she would act like I was a lost cause. Many times she would pace out of the room, out of my room in frustration or slap my face, not too hard to cause a problem and say there was a problem upstairs. Yeah, this is how my mother always tried to get me to learn, by beating me, by slapping me, calling me names. If I got it wrong, I got slapped, got called stupid. <sighs> the best was let me focus in on your sister so she doesn't turn out like you. I remember crying a lot. I experienced night terrors and would need to be calmed down outside or in the bathroom with a hot shower running. Bedwetting seemed to be an issue too. School and status were very important to my mom, so I would, I would often feel unhappy regarding my performance and not meeting her expectations. I was only eight or so after all. This carried over to most things I did for fun too. I was too incapable, stupid to do whatever, play video games, no right from wrong. She always knew best, did everything because she loved me. <clears throat> my childhood friends around my elementary or indoctrination years of my life involved lots of petty narc tactics such as guilt shaming, put downs, and the rest. Many of the friendships I developed were destroyed because of my mother's impossible standards the other parents were not meeting in my mom's eyes. I have explicit memories of my mom telling me about my friend X. Something like, well, X isn't my friend. Doesn't like, wait, I'm sorry. Something like, well, X isn't my friend, doesn't like you. She doesn't care about you, so he isn't your friend anymore. I would reject her assertion and my mom would leave the room as the victim in some way, leaving me on the floor crying. My best friend is my cousin, Tin. He's three years older than me. He stood up to my mom after she made fun of me. She ended that relationship and still distastes him to this day. I began hanging out with my male cousin, Ryan, a year younger than I, on my mom's side of the family. Him and I are very close, were very close, but he, had, but he was very free and rebellious. This relationship was horribly ended. She would tell me lies and purposely destroyed their, this relationship because my mom hates his rebellious nature. She would manufacture lies, tell me, tell me a lie about something Ryan did or said to drive chaos into the relationship. Well, here's your first problem. I mean, here's your problem. Stop making friends with your family members and make some friends outside because she's controlling the influx of everybody you have contact with. Back to my journal in first grade. In the journal were stunning descriptions of my mother yelling at me while my complacent family stood by and watched. Violent pictures of knives, depictions of a place of my mother's secrets, pages of me writing the word help and me wanting to run away. In the journal, I planned to run away. I would get in the car, drive to Florida with my sister. My sister refused, but I went in the car. Well, I was young, so I didn't know how to operate the thing. My mother found me, and I whole lot, and a whole lot of trauma happened. She punished me by locking me in the car, locking me in my room, making me sleep on the floor after placing my stuffed animal on the bed because that was the animal's bed now and denied food for me. It just it's just images of slow and it's just images and slow motion images of me feeling terror, panic and losses of power. My dad was always working on business trips or enabling her. She would tie me to the bed and use handcuffs to keep me from acting out and calling for help. My dad wouldn't believe me. <clears throat> I tried hurting myself to show her how pissed I was. I tried getting a wire that was hanging from the ceiling and pulling it against my neck in front of my mom. She mocked me because I wasn't doing it right. When I was having fun with my neighbors, I would run around in bare feet because my shoes were always too small. 
my dad was assistant coach on my soccer team and even i was to and even i was to get new shoes they were always tell me they were always to tell me what to fit one time on the on the field i was in such pain i couldn't move and the head coach was like what the fuck get your son some new shoes that fit my heel is bony and disfigured and causes me pain to this day it affects me to the point i have pains and i don't have very supportive shoes if i if i don't have very supportive shoes around this time i remember her i remember her room quite a bit I was into girls at an early age, was into being a man and being a hero. My mom hated the fact that I wanted to be a man. Being a man was all about what was down, what was downstairs. She would degrade my development before I hit puberty and interested in my development after puberty hit. Always concerned with my body and appearance. In her room, something occurred because when I was 20 years old, Conducting oral sex to a partner of mine, I had a weird, intrusive feeling of my mother. My mom had this eye and hand masks for moisturizing. And I remember wearing the mask under the covers and sleeping next to her. I often felt very uncomfortable. I've always had difficulty with displaying affection and developing relationships with women all my life. I did... Every, I did everything later than most. Fast forward to sixth grade, I was the nice, kind kid that everyone loved to be around. I was indoctrinated to believe I was a bad kid then better that better be nice to everyone. So this became a habitual behavior of mine that I still have trouble dealing with. So being, being a people pleaser. My teachers recommended me for honors courses, except English. My mom was in disbelief and made me think I was going, it was going to overwhelm me and I was not capable of succeeding. My homework during my middle school honor courses was extremely stressful because, of course, my mom had to be involved in all my work. I dropped out of honors. I had no friends besides the two friends from my soccer team. One was a great friend and the other had anger management issues. Against my will, I had to be friends with this individual. He would often intimidate me in roughhouse. There was a time he ragged on, raid, wait, he ragged at my other friend, chased him around the house to beat him up while my dad sat there laughing and wonder why I'm not stopping the angry outburst. I stood there frozen like I have many times in my life. Girls would often call my house on my house line. If I were actually to receive the call, my mom would show great disdain towards me and the girl who called. Yeah, because your mom's a borderline and she competes with you. Not look. Not only is your mother trying to raise you as a daughter, which was what my mother did to me, she also had these sexual f fetishes for you, and she also competed with every woman in your life. The only woman you need in your life is your mother, she would often say. One time I had the courage to arrange a date with a girl. My mom set impossible standards that my girlfriend was reluctant to meet. Her parents had to be at the movie theater. I had to, be, I had to bring a friend. I brought my only kind friend. My mother sat on the lower level of the theater and I was near the middle. I was not to tell, what is this? How old were you when this went down? I was not to touch her, but she, like a normal person, insisted she wanted to hold my hand and cuddle next to my side. I freaked out inside because I would look over there, look over, and there was my mother glancing, glancing over with disgust. She paced out of the theater in the middle of the movie, obviously upset. After the movie, she dragged me away from the girl and her mother and told me all the things I did wrong, how the girl was a slut, how this was never happening again. I, I, I can't believe this is actually happening. 
Back home, she would chase me around the house for any reason she felt necessary. I'm 14 years old, and I would crawl under the table so I can get to the opposite end she was. I would pace around the... I would pace around the table to she wouldn't to I would pace around the table so she wouldn't get to me until she would give up. At this age I was developing downstairs and started closing my door, but there was this open door policy. I was trained to believe erections were because I had to pee very badly and that erections were something different. The confusion was pervasive. At night I had to be very quiet or my mom would walk into my room and lecture me and ask questions. What are you doing? Go to sleep. She would come in whatever she wanted. There was no privacy. If I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night, she would wake up and confront me in the hallway and scare the crap out of me. I learned to be very quiet and quickly get to where I needed to go. If I had my iPod on the lowest possible value, volume, somehow she could hear the music. Oh, and I couldn't listen to what I wanted. Every song I downloaded was to be approved. Pretty much had nothing to listen to. I love music too. I was the lead clarinet player for our school, learned the saxophone and guitar, but she made me abandon all these interests of mine. I often dissociate when playing the guitar because any noise would spark a tantrum from my mom. Much much of my time was spent around my mom, tending to her in the malls and in the malls and whatnot. I was so down that I stopped smiling and looking happy. She trained me to always smile because it would draw suspicion which it did a couple times. She would come into the bathroom with me once I couldn't get my belt off to pee. She said, you can't sling it over your strap. Well, she proceeded to assist getting it out. Dude, you know, you've been sexually... I, I hope this woman's out of your fucking life. I, I really do. Because she's, cause she's fucking disgusting and she's dangerous. <clears throat> She would insist bad things would happen when I'm alone. So she took me into the women's bathroom with her and the dressing rooms until a stranger pointed out your son is too old and needs to stay outside. That's the first time I'm like, how are you walking in? Because you're only 25. So if you're 14, it's 11 years ago. I mean, that's what, 2008? You're what? There's no way. There's no way. There's no way your mother could possibly be getting away with this type of shit without being called out. Moving on to high school, my friends in middle school have been cut off and I'm starting new. I was a great athlete, respected track runner and soccer player. I was ahead of the game in my classes and was the only one promoted to varsity out of all the other kids. I had ambitions to be a scientist and a great athlete. My mom would often contradict herself saying to others how amazing I was but in closed doors being extremely invalidating of my ability and purpose in life. Teachers would come up to me when I was, when I was doing not that great and express their concern. They were losing their top student and wanted to know what was going on. I often said, I don't know, or nothing, or nothing most of the time. Later in high school, I gained the courage to put myself through community college math classes, which I did very well in order to be placed back in honors in AP coursework. I, su I succeeded academically and was placed in advanced placement physics, calculus, and history classes. This was around the time colleges were on everyone's mind. My mother put high expectations on me and would tell people how amazing I was. I didn't know what coursework or what career path to take, but she knew. After much struggle, she presented me with a path that catered to my interests. Go to every riddle in Florida where I would be an aerospace engineer because, well, that is what I liked. 
My aunt works for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena and was the planner and manager in the Mars Rover Curiosity mission. She talked about how I would go to Embry-Riddle, use my aunt for access to a career at NASA and be this superstar. Well, we visited the college. At the college, she changed her mind and said how I was a brat, unappreciative, and wanted to get away from her. Suddenly, the college was too expensive and everything was cheap. And, and every, The college was too expensive and everything else, but it was up to me whether to go. I chose not to because of the obstacles that were set in front of me. My only option was Penn State University. My first semester was liberating. I was making friends and doing well academically. I landed a research opportunity with a professor on campus and, it became, and became president of the Rocket Club on campus. When I would tell my mom, she would make it big and, and sound like it was silly and not, real, and not the real deal. But on Christmas in front of her family, brag about it. Going into my second semester, I completely shut down. I told a good friend that I don't know why I suddenly wanted to just die. My feelings were coming from a place of deep confusion and self-denial of my past. My third semester, I stopped going to classes, dropped out of doing research. I gained a girlfriend who was an important figure in my life that kept me afloat. I withdrew from that semester. My mom sent my father to get me to a psychiatrist on campus with the attention to get me on ant with with the intention of getting to get me on antidepressants. I never knew why I was feeling the way I did and couldn't never express in words how I felt. I came back home and there was my mom, sister, my mom, sister on the couch. My mother began telling me, look how you're making your sister feel. She is upset you are making her feel this way. My sister hugged me and I was so confused because I explicitly told my parents to let her know I'm good. Just needed to take a break from coursework. My parents asked what was going on. I said, I don't know. They only said I felt lied to and misguided in life. I struggled with the meaning of to life and what nature of reality was. I felt a hole in myself that I could not explain. When my parents heard I had reservations how to how they were handling me and treating me, they would burst into a fit how I was blaming them for my depression and how to talk about other things with my therapist. Oh, my parents would be in close contact with my therapist too. Long story short, I chose to major in medical physics and have been out of college, in and out of college, four times. <clears throat> One time I had to plead to go to college on hands and knees because they had financial control of me. I would promise to call them all the time, whatever I had to do to go back. They took advantage of this. If I missed a call while I was off killing myself and I wouldn't hear the end of it. Lots of fighting occurred. If they couldn't control me when I was off at college, they would call my sister, arouse my sister and implant deep seeds of worry. My sister would call me in tears, making me want to call my parents because look at what you're doing to them. My parents were quick to label me with depression and ever since it's been used to explain away my objections to my parents' behavior. It's infuriating being subject to malicious forms of manipulation and verbal abuse. And when you speak up about it, being told it's because of my depression. If that wasn't use, used as an excuse for their behavior, their response would be that it didn't happen. I didn't say that. You are crazy. I fought back hard and was torn apart. They convinced my sister they are the victims and I am nuts. There was a time an awful fight broke out and my sister was around. My mom heard my, my upset sister coming down to get in my face and said, 
Let's see if your sister can talk some sense to you. She turned away with a smirk on her face, with the sadistic satisfaction that one person to whom I genuinely didn't want to hurt was taking her side in the fight. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. Stop worrying about what your sister thinks. Sister, stop worrying about what your sister thinks. Your sister is just part of another pawn. Just another piece of the piece of the game. She does her little feigning concern thing as concern as another means of control. You need to get away from your entire family. This entire situation is sadistic. It's nuts. It's sexually. It's 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 overtly sexual. It's overtly sexual. The whole thing. Stop worrying about what your sister thinks. I was traumatized by the amount of verbal attacks and felt detached from myself. There was a time I completely left my body and felt out of my mind. My mother had already planted the narrative, convinced others she was the victim, that she has been doing nothing wrong. In front of my family, she would say how much she loves me and all, but behind closed doors was a completely different person. I was broken down and degraded to a point where she won, and I was subject to her control. Another withdrawal happened because of the emotional turmoil they were sub subjugating me to. What happens is they fill up your tank with fear, worry, and dread. Then once you break down, rush in and as these wonderful parents who don't know why their son is feeling this way and immediately seek medication. This was used again, used again on me. I told them I just feel down. I have negative thoughts, but I would never kill myself. They always ask me that, and I say no. Then when they pick up from campus, they don't even bother listening to me. Take me to an inpatient wing of, of the hospital. After the 10-minute evaluation, almost lead me to staying. After, after the 10-minute evaluation, almost led me to staying overnight at the hospital because my mom expressed to the doctor I wanted to kill myself, and these were his symptoms. I was frozen and just said to the doctor, sometimes I feel, you got to stop, all right, listen, you got to stop being traumatized, you got to stop being frozen, you got you to gotta stop, you got to stop, you got to stop, I get it, it's a lifetime of abuse, okay, but then you get, sometimes you get locked in where you're looking for it, so then you can become frozen in fear and traumatized at this and trauma. Stop. Stop using your trauma. Stop being frozen as an excuse for not doing anything. I was frozen and just said to the doctor, sometimes I feel all right, but often down. They gave me bipolar medication. When I got back, when we got back home, I was convinced I was fucked up and desperate for something to make me feel better. My sister forced my parents to not allow me to take the medication because I was not bipolar. I love her for sticking up for me in that moment because I would not have taken the medication. Time passes by and I'm a senior at college. The last withdrawal occurs. My best friend went to inpatient. My girlfriend and I went through a terrible breakup after an abortion, and I was back home. I spent eight months not working and not going to school because I wanted to feel normal and capable again. I could have been, it could have been a month if it was not for the toxic environment. I remember feeling the peace of mind knowing they were off at work and dreading when four o'clock came around when I finally built up the courage to tell my mom to tell my mom I had an abortion and this was having a profound effect on me why would you tell her that why 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 are you setting yourself up for this try see you keep setting yourself up for Trump like why why would you do this
built up the car. Why would you tell her this? She didn't understand why I would feel down about it and was extremely val invalidating and rude. I right away told her how astounded I was of her reaction. She became mad at me for saying such a thing. This is when it finally hit me how demented and sick she was and validated all the preconceived notions of her. She is incapable of displaying empathy. I researched toxic behavior and I went down the rabbit hole. So no, I'm educated on personality disorders and have some self-esteem back. I don't have my degree yet and don't have a job. My mom made it clear I needed to work for my dad because I'm not qualified for anything and how it was the only path to my success. I spent years telling parents sales was not my thing and I will never work for my dad. I was reluctant to find work at FMC Corporation as a logistical consultant. Had no idea what the job would entail until I got on the job. But I worked hard and saved my money. I worked full time and finally had the funds to put myself through courses at Temple University. I did well in my physics courses and, ki and at my job, keeping my parents as far away as possible. Fast forward, I have completed my coursework and received a promotion at work. My mother, meanwhile, being her despicable self, always trying to stir chaos. I'm at the point now where I am planning no contact and have thought about what the effects, what the effects this would be on my sister since she is completely indoctrinated by my mother. Th then you can't worry about, like I told you, don't worry about your sister. Worry about yourself. Worry about yourself because this whole thing has gone on way too long to avoid a complete fallout i knew if i didn't display an extra i didn't display an extreme intention to better the relationship with my parents my relationship with my sister would be impossible to repair i tried for months calmly trying to address the issues between my parents and i and every time there would be serious outbursts of anger and confusing verbal attacks I called my sister in tears after one talk, exclaiming to her to keep trying to repair the relationship, but I can't make it happen. Stop. All right, look. You're 25 years old. You can't be calling your sister in tears over your mother. You can't. You have to get control over your emotions. Okay? Your sister is jerking your fucking chain, Paul. And when you call her in tears, you're telling her she, I, she's got you right where she wants you. Sister's not your friend in this. She's not. I would tell my sister how much I would like to have a separate relationship with her and that I, and, and that I love very much how I can work with her so she can un how can I work with her so she can understand why I'm going no contact now you stop talking to her you don't call her in tears you don't beg her you don't go on your hands and knees because that's what you've been doing your whole fucking life you do what you need to do and you tell her not in tears, not like in a, not, not, not an emotional basket case, not frozen in fear, not traumatized. I'm cutting them out of my life, period. You know the reasons why, period. She doesn't know why you want out? Bullshit. Don't invalidate yourself by having to value it, by validating yourself to her. You invalidate yourself by trying to validate yourself. She knows why. You want her to understand? You tell her. You want to have a relationship with me? This is how. That's it. You don't beg her. You don't plead her. You tell her what the terms are. You state the terms. I'm telling you, she is jerking your chain. 
<clears throat> when it comes to when it comes down to it, I have no doubt my mother is a narcissistic sociopath and my dad is an enabler with covert narc tendencies. I've been seeing a therapist for five months now, talking about my past and present state of mind. My therapist urged me to leave without telling anyone and get the hell out. Thank you. Yes. Stop going. Yes. Th yes. So she's telling you, your therapist is telling you the same thing I'm telling you. Just go. <clears throat> He has told me I've been suffering from PTSD from a lifetime of trauma and has mentioned my mother has Munchausen's Ollie. I'm living on my own now and I'm going no contact. The hardest part of all this is that my mother is the victim who doesn't understand why her son left her and the family. I've been trying to keep my sister close, but I fear she is just like my mother now. She is very narcissistic and two-faced, where I am now setting boundaries with her. I told you this is who she was. I told you your sister is not your friend. There's no way. This is just the dynamic she plays. She is very narcissistic and two-faced. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't bother engaging if she is putting me down. Why would you care if she's putting you down? Exactly. Like, why are you trying to validate yourself to somebody who's putting you down then? Just go. Just go. I told her I'm traumatized and have PTSD. She knows this. By you trying to validate yourself this to her, you're invalidating yourself. But her feelings on everything trumps all, and her feelings always greater than what I am feeling. She is resorting to verbal attacks like my mother, like making me feel like shit will drive sense into me. I set a boundary of one call uh, of a call once a month for the time being because she has lied to me and has said some nasty things to me. You shouldn't be calling her at all. I told you at the beginning of this when you, that your sister's not a good player in this. I established a set of rules of conduct, conduct which she agreed to that doesn't allow any more crap to continue. We either treat each other with respect or I am limiting my contact that way. I'm not constantly being triggered to a negative place. When I told her I have PTSD, she moved on like I didn't say anything and said, well, she traumatized me by not talking to my parents and has PTSD. She would later admit she doesn't, but feels much worse than I do. She's been living away for, for the last five years and has always been the one to do whatever she wants. So stop chasing after her. Stop trying to have a relationship with, well, why would you try, why would you cut off of the relationship with your mother only to fucking carry on a relationship with a younger version of her. Why would you do that? Why? Why would you carry on a younger version, a relationship with the younger version of the narcissist you just want to cut out of your life? Why? She don't like you. She don't love you. She uses you. And every time you go crying to her, she just eats it up. <clears throat> right now, my family is withholding checks from work and important mail, which they are utilizing as leverage to have me come back home. Easter is tomorrow, and frankly, I can sense how worried they are about it. My family is going to come to our house, and I will not be there. My parents and sister have been drumming up how they are these saint-like features and are vulnerable, hurt victims. I'm trying to accept the fact that they will turn my family against me one way or another. Yeah, you, you better accept that fact. You better accept that fact. Move on. I have this strong desire to expose them for all to see and call out the shit they do. Show them the records of verbal abuse and admission of deliberately manipulating my sister to do what they want. 
but I am holding myself back because, like you said, the best revenge is no contact. My parents' role in turning my sister against me has been a long, calculated journey, and I don't know how to get her back. You never had her. Okay, it wasn't some long journey to turn your sister against you. This is who your sister is. It wasn't a long journey. Okay, any good memories you have of your sister were a manipulation. Okay, you need to accept your sister for who, she, who you know she is. A younger version of your mother. So why are you going to cut out your narcissist only to carry on a relationship with a younger version of her? makes no sense I look back and I can see clearly how she has been hurt and controlled by my mother's sick pleasure and quest to maintain power control and complete dominance over me right which now your sister will like to carry the torch but my sister is unwilling to listen anymore and is a hard pill to swallow. I observed how my mother operates and it is cold and calculated. Her influence changes people over time. She has changed my father into a dependent, enabling, scared boy. When he is around my mom, he switches into a completely different person. <clears throat> I have seen how she threatened to take away us children from him and seen what she has done to destroy whatever nature she didn't like in him. With that said, he's engaged in behavior that I won't discount, and I could see how he uses pity tactics even better than my mother can. Right. There are no innocents here. There are no innocents. He just hides behind her crazy. Yeah, your mother's horrible, but people hide behind this horrible. Your mother's a horrible, borderline sociopath. But unfortunately, people like to hide behind that. Just hard to see the good nature come out, his authentic personality, and see him flip so easily. I'm going to stop it here. Thank you, Ollie, for your time and energy to hear me out. Your thoughts and opinions are always appreciated. Thank you. You need to go to no contact, Paul, from all of them, your sister included. Because why are you going to go? Why are you going to try to carry on a relationship with a younger version of a narcissist you just went no contact with? Makes no sense whatsoever. So I hope that helps. Thank you for your contribution and your story, Paul. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100%. On contributions from all of you without you guys all this goes away so if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box also please like and share this video wherever you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads I'm Ollie Matthews this has been the narcissistic resistance